I'm a good guy, why would I? Yeah. And it's because they're not convicted of what they've done before God. Again, the reality is, is if we would truly see the, the darkness and the depth of sin, we would cry out, I need to go to a place like that. <clears throat> the torment staggers the mind. The stench, the darkness, the loneliness, the fear, the cries. Pain that is indes indescribable, but yet the words that can be described would be excruciating, agonizing, dreadful. A place of unending agony of the soul. A place of shame and disappointment. A place of sorrow and regret. It's a place of unanswered prayer unanswered dreams, unanswered hope. Because once you're there, you're there. You know, whenever I, I think of unanswered hope, I think of a story of that submarine in World War II and how there was a <coughs> disabling of the submarine that had, had a sunk and they came to rescue the crew. And the crew that was in that capsule, no, no, but you're a little claustrophobic, anybody else? Yeah. Maybe it was because my brothers and I used to hold each other down and choke, choke each other. Because we liked the, the sound of the, their voice when they were choking. <laughs> But to be in a submarine, I don't know that I could even be in a submarine, the thought of being under several thousand feet of water. But there was leaks, there was this submarine that was disabled and they didn't know whether they would get out and there was a uh, tapping that they were doing with the SOS. And what they figured out what the, the SOS was was is there any hope? They just wanted to know, is there any hope to get out of here? And the reality is, is once somebody crosses over to the grave, that's it. Yeah. As long as you're taking in breath, there's hope. Amen. Yes. His name Amen. is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. But after... We cease to breathe. There's no hope. There's no choice. But the choices we've already made. Yes. See, it's a place we don't want to hear about. It's a place we don't want to think about. It's a place we want to say, hurry up and get finished with that message. And go on to the next one. But it's a place that's real. Yes. And it's a it's a place that needs to be a reality in our life. Not because a, a lot of us in this place don't know the Lord Jesus. A lot of us in this place, as far as I know, now God knows for sure. Names the name of Jesus and knows the Lord Jesus. But we need to know so that we can warn those that are going to that place. Amen. So the question is, do we really, do we really, really, really believe that people are there even right now? Which then begs the question, do we care? Does it really matter to us? Does it only matter what restaurant we get to this afternoon or is it matter who goes there or who doesn't? Lamentations 1 says, Jerusalem has sinned gravely. 
Therefore she became vile. All who honor her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns away. Her uncleanliness is in her skirts. She did not consider her destiny. And we've heard it said, oh, how the mighty has fallen. We look around and we see evangelists. We see televangelists, evangelists We see preachers. We see pastors. We see people that we knew serve God, turn, and fall away. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Do we care? We talk. We gossip, but do we care? Yes. Do we weep? Do we shed one tear that the name of God is being dishonored? That there are people saying, where is your God? Does it matter to us? We should be people that are weeping and praying yes. before God. Yes. Broken hearted over a brother that goes in sin. The prophet declares, is it nothing to you? When he's referring to Jerusalem. Where is the reaping of weeping of Rachel who have lost their children to sin and death? Not this Rachel. Isaac's Rachel. 